told you you so extra But I know I'm the same yeah. Love me in spite of my trauma Give me what I need instead of the drama Cause when it pop off it's like oh my What's up guys, it's BD here, and yes, I have ascended. Today we're gonna review the AW2521H. It's a 1080p, 360 hertz monitor, guys. Gone are the days of 240 hertz. <laughs> I won't be caught dead using one of those anymore, right? Right? But wait, guys. I think we're reaching the point of diminishing returns when it comes to monitors. As good as they are, we're starting to get there, especially now that the hardware, as good as that is, it's still kind of holding us back. So we're gonna get into all that today. We're gonna see, is this monitor worth it? Is 360 hertz worth investing in right now? We're gonna get into it after a word from our sponsor, Luster. Okay, so you know when you're shopping on Amazon, there's a million options to choose from and every product basically has four and a half stars. Now, I don't know about you, but I feel overwhelmed sometimes and I wonder if the reviews are even real. So I end up going to 50 different sites trying to figure out what's the best and at the end of it all, I'm still left confused as ever. Well, Luster can help. It's a free browser extension that analyzes trusted expert reviews from the likes of Wirecutter, YouTube videos, and even Reddit discussions and it gives you an instant second opinion right on on Amazon so you don't even have to leave the page. Luster can even recommend you products based on your budget. It does real-time price comparisons across Amazon, Walmart, Best Buy, Target, and more so you can always sleep easy knowing you got the lowest price possible and will even let you know when the products are going on sale. It's like the old saying goes, Time is money, but with Luster, you save both. It's free and it's so simple. So just click the link in the description, install Luster, and let the extension do all the heavy lifting while you do your online shopping. The 360 hertz monitors are running for around $600 to $700. Pretty hefty price, but you're getting a feature packed monitor here. I just wanna to touch quickly on the design portion of this and just really focus in on this 360 hertz. Now for the design choices, the stand isn't so bad as the other ones. You can tilt it, you can swivel, it, all that good stuff. The monitor and the stand are both this matte black gray look. I really like the look of this over their usual white aesthetic that they've been choosing recently. It's just a little bit less all up in your face. I noticed before it kind of forced you into this like white setup where I feel like black goes with white and black. The bezels on this are really slim so if you do want to put this in a double or triple monitor setup you can do that. Of course they've got the menu buttons on the right side of the panel on the back and then on the bottom of the monitor they also have the power button. They've also got all of the latest and greatest ports on this monitor as well. Now this is an IPS panel, so it is gonna have better colors than a TN panel like the BenQ XL2546K. In the menus, they have the usual suspects. I really like the MOBA RTS mode for this monitor. The colors look great on that one. I did a test with my calibrator and I got 99% of the sRGB. So a pretty good monitor. I actually edited the last three videos on this monitor. So real world experience, I'm fairly confident with the colors on this monitor. They also have dark stabilizer on here. That's an important feature, especially for FPS shooters. If you wanna lighten up darker areas so you can see your enemies. Since this is IPS, there will be some backlight bleeding. I see a little bit at the top and on the right side of the monitor. It's not noticeable when you're gaming, but if you do put on a black screen, you will see it. And of course this does have G-Sync or adaptive sync as well. Now this is a 25 inch 1080p monitor, which I think for competitive esports is the best resolution. For most casual gamers, I think that 27 inches and 1440p is better though, just because the desktop experience is way better. The games look a lot sharper, especially if you're playing non-FPS games on the side. Now this does have a one millisecond gray to gray response time. I did some testing with the pursuit test to see if there's a lot of ghosting. And to my surprise, this has a ton of ghosting, like a lot of ghosting on the UFO. I don't know if this is just my unit, but on the fast four milliseconds, on the super fast, the two milliseconds, and the one milliseconds, the extreme, I got a lot of ghosting. And it was to the point where I really noticed it when I was playing. Like when I would snap, it just, there was just so much blur that I couldn't place my enemies and it caused me to miss a lot of shots compared to when I was using a TN like the BenQ XL2546. Okay, and even when I compared this monitor to its brother, the 1440p version, 240 hertz monitor, that one didn't have as much ghosting as well. So I don't know if I got a bad panel, but this is an issue with this monitor. And I don't know if it's just because the tech is so new that this is happening, but for fast moving games with a lot of motion blur, 
it just wasn't it for me. Now I wanna take that and I wanna run with it into the main question of this video. Is 360 hertz worth it? Is it necessary? Now, in most of my videos, I just mention this fact again and again. When I moved up from 144, 165, up to 240 hertz, I barely noticed a difference. But once I moved back down to 144 hertz, my eyes were just so messed up. It took my eyes a lot of time to adjust going back down to 144 hertz. When I put the 360 hertz monitor on, I was like, okay, I don't really see it with my eyes right now. So maybe if I go back down after using it for three weeks, maybe, just maybe, I'll see that same difference that I saw when I went from 240 hertz back down to 144 hertz, right? Back then when I did that, I was only getting 96 frames more. Now getting an extra 120 frames, I should notice a difference. Well, that wasn't the case because I'm running a 3090 it's no slouch, okay? One of the best graphics cards on the market. I got a 9900K, not bad. I was roughly getting the same amount of frames I was getting on Valorant that I had on my original 240 hertz monitor, which was around 200 to 250 frames. Now, I don't know if our hardware is just holding us back from getting 360 hertz at the moment. So in that case, this monitor is kind of like a future buy because the games right now, if I, if I can't get 360 hertz on Valorant, you're not gonna get it on Fortnite. <laughs> you're not gonna get it on Overwatch for sure with all that action going on. If I'm just staring at a wall, I'm only getting roughly around 250, 260 tops on Valorant. So this is why I wasn't seeing a difference when I went up to a 360 hertz monitor. So first you gotta have the hardware. And I think that the hardware right now it's still as powerful as it is, I hate to say it, it's just not there for the 360 frames. So I think 360 hertz right now is not necessary. It's not worth the extra premium unless you're building for the future. And even then, there's gonna be so many more monitors that come out between now and when the hardware releases that can run this 360 hertz that you might as well just wait. And what I really wanna see from monitor companies is some new technology. Like I like the UMLB, now it's running at 240 hertz, which is really, really nice. And if you guys don't know what that is, it actually reduces motion blur when you're spinning around and it really keeps your scenery intact while you're moving. And that's one feature that I can really get behind because me, I really see a difference when I'm gaming and I feel like I hit more shots when my enemy is on the screen and it's not blurry. Problem with the UMLB on this monitor is that I was getting a bunch of jaggies and artifacts and it just wasn't pretty. It was actually distracting me and that's no good, especially if you're in a competitive setting, it's gonna be an issue. And this is where I think monitors like the BenQ XL2546K is the better buy. Diac Plus, this made me realize how good Diac Plus is. Diac Plus is the truth, okay? I haven't reviewed that monitor yet, I will. Don't worry, I'm working on it. But until then, guys, if you're thinking about going to 360 hertz, I don't think it's worth it. I'd rather you put your money into a BenQ 2546K, get your money's worth, and dominate. Because this monitor isn't magically gonna give you headshot ability like Scream, okay? If I was the 1v1 Scream and he had a 240 hertz monitor and I had a 360 hertz monitor, he's still killing me, okay? It's not gonna make me any better. So for me, the main purpose of this monitor is to drive down the prices of 240 hertz monitors, which we've kind of been seeing. It's more accessible than ever. I'll drop some recommendations down below in the comments if you guys are interested in some 240 hertz monitors. But like I said, until then, 360 hertz, no go, it's not worth it, okay? You can't convince me right now. All right guys, it has been your boy BT. Don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe. That's gonna do it for the AW2521H monitor from Alienware. I'll see you in the next one, peace.